thanks to Hot Click Marketing for supporting this video. For more information, go to their website. It's midday, it's match day. It's Manchester City against Arsenal in that stadium tonight. But as you can see, it's all locked. Nobody has access. I won't be at the game. I, like everybody else, will be watching the game on TV. As a home and away supporter since the 70s, I've never actually seen a City competitive game live on television. It will feel very strange in a moment or two to drive away and go home and know that I can't watch the game inside the stadium tonight. I'm not the only one who feels like this. Well, I've missed four home games since 1976, 32 away games since 1976. Uh, pre-season, every, every pre-season, every home and away game. Uh, I watch the women's home and away in Europe uh, and the youth uh, team in, in the youth, only in the youth cup, but men and women home and away in Europe pre-season and the youth games. So you're obsessed. Basically, well, people call it an obsession. I wouldn't go that far, but. Yeah, I love the football club, I love Man City. Well, I think there's two sides to football. There's the armchair fan and there's the real football fan. And I've nothing against the armchair fan. You know, that's that's how they enjoy watching the football and they'll be the ones that are looking forward to it coming back. But I've got to say the majority of people that are members of our branch, you know, I'd say 80, 85% don't want it back. Uh, they, they want it back with fans in the stadium and, and, and on that basis only. This is my club tonight, this is my team. Uh, how am I going to feel? I'll let you know 15 minutes into the game, like the German game. Uh, I don't think it's football. Am I going to enjoy it? I hope I do, but I doubt that I will. Football was set up um, all those years ago, back in the 1870s, 1880s, was as a spectator sport, purely and simply. That's, that's what its function was. Um, and if there are going to be no spectators for it, then there seems very little point. I've mixed emotions, really. I really, really, I'm, I'm right down the middle. I can't decide either way whether I'm glad it's coming back or whether I'm disappointed. I don't know. Obviously, I'm excited to get back. It, it shows that we're getting back to some sort of normality, not, not full normal. Um, I think full normal will come when, when the supporters are allowed inside the stadium. Um, but this is a start, isn't it? You know, it's fantastic to get it back on. Um, it's going to be good to see the condition that the players are coming back in. Um, I'm fully expecting them to be raring to go. And um, I, I'm looking forward to, a, it's a bit of a festival of football, isn't it? Over the next few weeks, just to see games every single day with this and the championship. And then also the playoffs in the other the other couple of divisions as well. So there's a hell of a lot of football to be watching and something to look forward to. I'm assuming, as the England under-19 coach, that you kept very close tabs, and I know you have really, on Phil Foden and some of the young players. Yeah. Um, looking at this game, but looking further forward as well, are you hopeful that with five substitutes allowed to come on in the game, nine sitting on the bench, that you're going to see more progress from the young English, particularly players, that you're keen on seeing progress? Yeah, well, it certainly opens up a window for them, doesn't it, with, with being allowed five subs. And I think, is it nine, nine on the bench and, and five being able to use? So, you know, in this particular game, um, you know, we've got the likes of Tommy Doyle and Taylor Harwood Bellis who are involved in my, my England group. And for Arsenal, there's, there's Bakaya Saka. Um, you know, so there's, there's players who are out there who hopefully will get an opportunity. And, and the truth is, even if they don't get onto the field, just being around first team players, being able to train with this, the, the likes of uh, you know the Agueras and Silvers and De Bruyne, has got to help these players develop. It's got to be really good experience. So that alone will be really good for them. But it'll be even better if I'm watching these games and I can see one of our lads getting an appearance as well. I haven't missed it as much as I thought I would, to be perfectly honest. Uh, well, and I think I won't be the only one that feels like that. There's been lots of different things to do and. Uh, and focus on. If I'm perfectly honest, probably March or April, I certainly didn't see this coming. I didn't think we'd be at this point, but um, and certainly with the way at that crisis, at that time with the crisis, with the pandemic, I thought, yeah, it's just not going to happen. This is, you know, life's more important than football, but we've got there. Um, am I pleased it's back? Yeah, I'm just sitting watching the Villa game as well while I speak to you. That's on. And that is strange. 
it's strange. You can just tell right from the from the offset. It's it's totally different to you know, and we knew that, but you know, the players are struggling to adapt, and you know, Villa have started quite well. And who's going to win tonight? Um, I've got to say City, but you just never know. You just never know. It's been a long time, and how the bodies are going to react. Um, I'm intrigued to. I'm intrigued to see the reaction of the players, the body language of the players, how they start. Will they hit the ground running? Will they ease themselves in? Um, and then that first real major contact with somebody, how do they react? You know, so it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. I'm mean, interested to watch both games. I thought I'd enter the match day spirit. Um, you know, got the old uh, regular on, and uh, yeah, as usual. The only thing I'm missing is all the people I'm normally with. So at least I can share it with you. Um, feel odd, really. That's the that's the best way to describe it. Just doesn't feel um, normal. You know, I knocked out 50 games last season. So, you know, match going is what I do. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to see how I feel, you know, when the game's on. Obviously, I've missed it. Um, so it'd be good to see some football that matters. I think that's how I feel. I'm buzzing. That's absolutely buzzing. As the only reason I was cautious about wanting wanting it to go back in the first place is because Liverpool were going to win the league. I've accepted that now. Um, it's not going to get voided, so it's. I'm happy for it to be back. To be honest, um, I do get the idea that fans aren't in there, so it's not the same. And people that have been there for years and have streaks going don't want to lose those streaks. But we have to get back to some sort of normality. I mean. So really, I'm just buzzing. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the game tonight. Um, obviously, I've been shielding for the last 12 weeks. I've not even got a City shirt with me. This was passed over uh, from my dad. Um, I'm going to go over to see him now. First time I've been in a car for 12 weeks will be uh, in, about, in about 10 minutes. So I might end up throwing up. But I'm going to go over and have a beer in his front garden in the pouring rain just to, uh, to toast the football coming back. And I'll pop over um, to, my, to my uncle's, which is only five minutes down the road, uh, to do the same in their front lawn as well. Uh, just sort of celebrated being back, so it's a it's an exciting night for me, really. But on a personal note, more than anything, just because it's something different. It's something that's it certainly has lifted my spirits, even though I took the mick out of it at first because the government are using it as sort of a distraction tactic. It's distracted me. Um, I might be a simple person for that, but it has distracted me, and I'm I'm really buzzing for, for it to be back. I think I said before, I don't think we should be playing. Um, I, I'm curious. I will watch it. Um, but I really don't think we should be playing. Uh, as to the uh, outcome of the game, I don't really know because I'm, I'm, I'm I switched off from football at the moment with everything that's going on. I think there's more important things at the moment, but they're going ahead with it, obviously. And I will, I'll just pop in and see how it goes. I'm, I just popped in the front room now and I'm look, watching a bit of the Villa game. I just turned it on and it, it's, it's, it's not football. It's not football. It's just it's it's, it's 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 a TV show. It's it's like going to a party and there's no music. It's it's, it's not it's not football to me. There are a few more passionate fans than you. I see where you sit in the ground. You've been one of those who've held banners up and protested. You yeah. really really care. You stand a little bit disenfranchised by all this. Yeah, I am. I mean, I've, I've, my love of the game has been waning. Uh, you see me making noise around that city, like say. Um, culminating with the farce we have with VAR and the racism incidents we've had over the years. I've been making noises about that. I'm becoming disenchanted with the game. And this is not a guy who's just like, who's been around for a few years. I've been, I've been watching football since I was a kid. I've been watching it for decades. So nobody can really tell me anything out of the way football's gone. Um, so I do know my game and this is not the same game we're watching at the moment. I think, you know, it's because we've got so much loyalty as football fans, we'll stay with our club regardless. But I think we, a few of us have seen uh, writing on the wall the way the game's going because it's changed dramatically and not necessarily for the good. I this think. might seem like an odd question, but do you care yeah. who wins tonight? You know what, Ian? That is not, that is not um, an odd question. I know what you're saying. And it's probably for the first time. Oh, oh, it's a weird one. I want us to win. Oh, now the game's coming, I want us to win. But if you'd ask... That's been that probably a few a week or so ago. I'm not bothered. I'm re- it's that to that state, and I mean that hand on heart. When people say, "Oh, you'd be bothered if you're going to win the league," but the scenario we have now, the way it's gone, I'm not bothered. But once the game starts, I'm sure you know my blue head will come out, and I want us to win. 
Um, but it's not the game. It's not the game we know. They can dress it up as much as they want. However, the TV people, which have done a good job dressing it up and trying to sell it, because it is a commodity to them. It's their job. It's their livelihood. I understand that. But the selling it to people, us people have been there from the start and seen the game from grassroots. And what we're seeing now, is, it's just a show. It's, it's just a show. Hi, uh, my name is Shubhayan Chakravarti and I'm from Manchester City Delhi Supporters Club. And uh, I'm, I'm, it's a huge privilege to be with Ian Cheeseman here uh, because he's a legend himself uh, for the work he has done for the club and uh, for the community itself. So it's a great honour to be here uh, in Cheesy's blog. And you're so, looking forward to tonight's game, aren't you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've, we all have missed Premier League so much with uh, what, we have, uh, what we have been through in the past couple of months. I think it's a big step forward to have uh, football back again. And uh, Premier League itself is special and how uh, special Manchester City is for the fan. Uh, for the fan base, it's, it is known to the world. We are a famous fan, fan group in, in whole. So, yeah, uh, today I'll be watching it from my home, uh, from, from my TV set. But there will be no fans in the stadium and the noises we make, the chants. It will be missed. The artificial sound is not that great, but uh, there's something special about the real so sound of the fans that will be missed. Unfortunately, I'm exiled down to the south of England at the moment, so I'm, uh, I'm just outside of London, so I don't get to as many home games as I like, but I go to all the away uh, as many as I can. So watching on the sofa isn't too dissimilar for myself, so it won't be too, uh, too out of the ordinary. However, you know, just generally the buzzing leading up to the game, it just feels a little bit peculiar and I think we all would be there for a game like tonight in, in normal circumstances so missing being on the concourse uh, and queuing half an hour for a pint. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the boys play again. Uh, it's definitely going to lift my spirits. You know we've had a, um, a sad couple of weeks but this is definitely going to lift my spirits tonight and yeah I just genuinely want to see the boys play again. Um, I understand that people have been um, disgruntled by the return of football for many reasons but um, you know, and I appreciate that and I appreciate the views, but I'm just really excited and I can't wait to see the boys take to the field. I just wish I was there tonight. But other than that, I'm going to be behind them just as much as, as I'd be in the ground, but from the comfort of my own uh, sofa, Ian. Tell me your thoughts then on the game, City versus Arsenal. Are you going to see high tempo? Pep's worried that the, the game might be a bit slower tonight. I can't even believe you're asking me what I think the game's going to be like. It sounds so good to be hearing. You asked me that question, Ian. Um, Arsenal, good football inside. Let's not forget, they've not signed a whole new 11. Um, I'm guessing the players are going to be shadows of themselves for the first couple of weeks while English football returns. But yeah, I just think that it, it, it's not going to be as quick as we used to seeing. But I still think we're going to see two really good um, quality football insides go at each other and, um, and showcase some beautiful football. Uh, don't know if there's going to be too many goals or not, but I'm sure every fan watching from home is going to be hoping to see Bit of a goal fest with two good passing sides in. Five o'clock, quarter past five in the morning in Melbourne. It's the day of the rain in Manchester. We mustn't dwell on that too much. If Gary Neville will get upset, uh, you won't get upset about seeing Kevin De Bruyne in action, Gary, will you? No, I'm sure it's invincible in 2020. The delay, City King, I thought Arsenal started quite bright. City City were a little bit slow getting out of the traps, maybe just the way that Arsenal started. But I thought from about 30 minutes on, 35 minutes, uh, De Bruyne and Silva started getting on the ball and started playing. And I thought they murdered them after that point. Um, you know, I mean, I know they're making a big thing of David Luiz's mistake, but. The goalkeeper Leno has made so many saves to keep him, it, you know, to keep it at nil nil. Then they go one nil up, um, and, and then the penalty again. Um, you know, I've got my boys texting us on our WhatsApp saying, "Is that a bit harsh?" And I, I thought the referee had to do it. I thought he, he was a he pulled him back, um, brought him down, and there's always this talk of this double jeopardy rule and should he be sent off as well as a penalty, but you've got to make a clear attempt to win the ball and David Luiz didn't, pulled him back, it's a penalty. And then from then on, up until City going down to 10 men as well, it was a perfect game for City to get back into it because they've got a comfortable win. They could sort of conserve a bit of energy because Arsenal had lost their way a little bit when they were down to 10 and, and in the end, I'm sure Pep Guardiola will, will be absolutely delighted with that as a first game back, win it comfortably, 
Um, obviously, they've got the concern about the young lad Garcia who got absolutely wiped out. But I think that's probably more just a precautionary one. I'd be very surprised if it was any more than just a maybe a mild concussion or something like that. And fingers crossed, he'll be uh, he'll be back and ready to go for the next one. It was a bit strange because. You know, they were playing the crowd noise. And, um, yeah, that's what you usually hear at home, except obviously there's a bit more variety to it. You know, all I can kind of hear was Blue Moon and not many other recognisable songs. Um, and then occasionally I'd catch the seats and think, oh, yeah, there's nobody there. Um, but as the game went for City, on City's, uh, from City's point of view, I actually think they played incredible. I, I felt like they, they didn't play any different. It was, you know, almost like there wasn't, that it didn't matter there was a, wasn't a crowd there but I did feel that it possibly affected Arsenal and uh, you know maybe the way that they couldn't pick themselves back up again you know because they obviously bring quite a big support with them anyway when you know they're one of the teams that, that bring you know bring a, quite a large support with them and um, you know it affect I mean obviously it's our benefit <laughs> as a City fan but I do think it affected the way they be, was able to pick themselves up because it was almost like they couldn't and it was almost like they had no umph or, you know, no no, no fans to sort of shout or chant. Um, so I do think it had an effect on the outcome of the game, not having a crowd there, but obviously it benefited us. So it's not a complaint as such, it's just an observation. Well, honestly, I think it was a great game uh, coming back from lockdown for both the teams. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, in starting of the game, Arsenal, uh, we could see the potency of uh, what Arsenal has the capability to show. But uh, I think around the 35-minute mark is when uh, Manchester City actually switched its gears and, uh, you know, some chances were starting to come into play. But I think after uh, David Luiz's red card, Arsenal just sort of uh, gave up into the match and, uh, you know, uh, even uh, we saw the possession in the second half, 81% was at Manchester City around the 60-65 minute mark. So that was, I think, a big thing. And uh, of course, the uh, injury to Eric Garcia was uh, heartbreaking. I almost had tears, actually, and I wasn't able to enjoy uh, Phil Foden's goal also uh, uh, completely. So I think it was a very good game. And uh, with the best of luck uh, to Manchester City for the rest of the season. It was a bit difficult to warm up. And I think, it, I think even the players were, to be fair. Um, just very, very surreal, I think. Um, confused, excited. Uh, but I think as we sort of started to get going, I think also when David Luiz came on, the game picked up. Um, so delighted with how the game finished. Uh, great result. I think the second half we came on leaps and bounds. Um, just felt a bit like an exhibition match. Very weird, pre-season friendly almost. Uh, but a win's a win, so we should be happy, I guess. Um, doesn't feel the same, not going to glow, not going to sort of rub uh, my Arsenal friends' noses in it. It just doesn't feel the same. But as I say, a win's a win, so it shouldn't be too uh, disgruntled, really. Give Cheesy a big wave, mate. Hey, Cheesy. Cheesy. You all right? <laughs> These Have guys you enjoyed the game? Have you enjoyed the game? It's weird watching it from home. Normally, we're at the pub, but uh, we can't do that in New York yet. So you've got... Patrick's in uh, Australia, and obviously the rest of the guys are over in, uh, in in the States, in New York. So Barry's just disappeared. Barry's from Sale originally. Um, and I think Joe, Joe, Joe Spencer and, uh, and Crystal are all, uh, are all sort of uh, residents born and bred in the States. Watch some friendly games in the summer and stuff like that that you think it has a very, very similar feel to it. Um, and, and I think it took the guys a while to get into the stride, but you know, once they did, you, you've only got to look at the stats to see how, how much uh, better than Arsenal we were. Um, I, I was quite impressed with with the, you know, the, the, the sort of amount of effort that they put in, the intensity, and certainly towards the latter part of the first half, you know, we, we took control, didn't we? Before even before we scored that first goal. Are you happy with this as a new norm? No, not at all, mate. It's not. It's not football with it. Football without the fans is not football. Um, and, you know, you listen to Pep and he's talking now uh, on the TV. It's just something I think they've been forced into doing, you know. Um, and he, more than anyone, having lost his mum, uh, knows the importance of people rather than uh, finishing things like this just purely for the money that's involved in football. 
Um, and, and I did, you know, we thought about maybe not even watching it, but it's City. No matter how, how much you dress it up, you, you really struggle uh, to turn it away. And I saw both ends of the spectrum today on Twitter. There was uh, a guy who used to sit next to Lee who said, you know, can't believe I'm missing the game tonight. I just don't know what to do, whether to go down to the ground. And another lad who said, you know, football's dead to me. Um, I, I've just no interest in, in sitting and watching it. Uh, what's the term they use? Fresh air, not armchair. Um, and, and to be honest, you know, I've been an armchair fan most of this season because of a variety of things, uh, personally, and the way that the game's gone with VAR, as I've bored you with previously. Um, so this is, you know, a bit of a step even further. I watched, uh, I watched it on both channels, actually, with, with the crowd noise and without the crowd noise. Uh, obviously, with the, with the crowd uh, noise being put in there, I thought it was a better experience. Uh, maybe Sky uh, and Stroke, the Premier League, have got it, sort of the, the way they put it across on TV, a lot better than the way German football did. And I, I had reservations before when I spoke to you about actually watching it with no fans, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I quite enjoyed the experience uh, to say I wasn't there. So it wasn't ideal, it wasn't perfect, but a lot better than what I saw with the German football, miles better. So, I, yeah, I enjoyed the game. Currently, I'm living in Montreal, in Canada. Um, I watch it on the, um, the premium sports channel over here at the moment. Um, I've just watched the game, obviously. And... Um, how does, me, the, how does the experience compare, given that you watch on TV a lot? How yeah. did that compare to watching it normally on TV? So typically, I would go out and meet a, gr a group of people, and I was watching a local bar or pub. So we still have a little bit of ambience when watching the game. I do watch a lot of games also at home. Um, I didn't think it was so bad. I thought, I thought it was better than it was going to be. Let's put it that way. Big shout out to the three companies that have supported the products that I put out under the Forever Blue title throughout the year, the podcast and the vlogs. See you all soon.